Hey guys and gals, Mr. West here. Um, this will be a walk around of uh, the latest uh, UAV platform, uh, UAV style FBV platform uh, that I put together out of uh, a few leftovers and some some new stuff and a new uh, new idea. Had thought about it some time ago and hadn't done anything with it. Thought maybe it was way too heavy, but it seems seems it may be heavy, uh, but it can be lightened up with more holes. And that is the four-inch drain pipe. Home Depot used to carry that. Now you may have to go to a plumbing supply, like an irrigation supply. Some of your local hardware stores might have this um, PVC pipe. Uh, anyway, so let's do a walk around. I'm gonna flip the camera over and we'll. We'll go from there. So there she is in a, a twin boom uh, configuration, pusher prop, four inch PVC pipe. And I say drain pipe, it's uh, white through and through. It's a drain pipe, thin wall, four inch PVC, and it's all PVC. Now, some of the stuff you see now at Home Depot has. Um, the uh, black interior and white exterior it is drain pipe but that is not what we have here and it is heavier and uh, not nearly as true or rigid it's very flexible and it's an inexpensive recycled plastic and when you cut into it it smells like uh, laundry detergent bottles interesting huh anyway so that's what uh, they do recycle a lot of there's my radio 8 channel RDS 8000 Airtronics been very happy with it um, so there it is. That's the Sedona, uh, Sedona T uh, wing on there in its natural state. I hadn't modified it, um, and then I uh, fashioned it to fit a um, a block house attachment block and house. You can see up underneath there a little bit wasn't too difficult at all and this plastic makes a really nice rigid airframe so as far as the 4 inch goes I'd highly recommend it for the 72 inch type wingspans and a UAV style 4 inch is great but when you go to like a 60 inch this is probably going to be a little too heavy um, maybe not but but probably a little too heavy you can get away with a 3 inch of the same style and uh, I probably could have gotten away with 3 inch here I had 4 inch there you go. Do with what you have, right? So the back end, uh, it's, so this is modular. Uh, the wing comes off, obviously, two bolts, standard, standard uh, Sedona configuration, right? There are the two uh, thumb bolts that go down into a block threaded that has a single uh, nose, a single peg in the leading edge that goes into a, a, a leading edge block up there in the front. And I put that flat top on it, that little doghouse looking thing on top to um, to carry the FPV camera mount so I'll sink into that foam. There's nothing under the foam other than a foam block. I'll cut in and put a uh, servo, a uh, pan servo for um, FPV tilt and pan assembly camera. And then uh, everything else uh, typical. I'll put the GPS out on the wingtip, and then the uh, opposite, I'll put the uh, uh, video transmitter. The back end, I mean, I, I love the heck out of this foam board. The only thing I don't like about foam board is that it is susceptible to moisture and warpage. Though you can get it out with a real fine mist of uh, water on, on uh, one side of it, do both sides, and then flatten it out. Fine mist, not too much water. And then it dries out, and then you're all good to go. Uh, it's about 3 16 inch uh, thick, and it's very nice, uh, nice and rigid material. Got a nice surface to it. It's paintable, tapeable. So if you seal it up, uh, like with tape, packing tape, clear tape works great. Uh, you can paint it first, and then clear tape it. Uh, paint doesn't stick well to the clear tape uh, very nicely, and you can also reinforce edges. Uh, like I'll take a quarter inch, I'll rip a uh, quarter inch material and set it in on the diagonal. So 
one corner is facing down into the foam. I'll make a little channel in it, set that in there with hot glue, very little hot glue, and then I'll take uh, a sanding block to it and just round over the front edge a little bit, and then I'll put a, a piece of uh, packing tape over it. Hinges are all done with packing tape, the heavy duty style. My rudders are non-functional right now, but they are cut in and ready to go. All I need to do is throw some servos in there. So far I have found I don't need rudder. Of course, rudder is a nice, a nice treat on landing, especially with crosswinds. So far my, my uh, airstrip here has been uh, very crosswind friendly. There it is. <coughs> it runs east and west, and that's where the uh, the, the dominant, predominant winds blow from west to east. Uh, so there's your, uh, there's your motor housing, motor block. I've got it extended out the back like that because I, I estimated CG to be necessary for it to be that far back. Um, I could move it closer and everything can move back further and I can probably trim off the front end. Uh, the beauty of all this, uh, this plastic is it's it, you know it holds it holds screws it it um, it does everything you want it to do fairly rigid. I cut in some uh, vent holes up underneath. You can see those vent holes they go all the way around, and so on the front end you can see right into the uh, the tubing there. Um, so far this hasn't been a problem. Um, it's like a giant intake. And that's where my camera sits, right there, cradled, laying flat, using Velcro to hold it down. Get all kinds of nice airflow through there. In fact, when, when I didn't have the holes in the back, it actually wanted to nose up when you started speeding up. Uh, so the bubble of pressure and air right here kind of pushed the nose up. So if you're going to do something like this, and this is a 45 degree angle cut on a typical chop saw, 12 inch would get it better. You can do it with a 10 inch, especially if you have a slide. Um, but it takes two. You have to flip cut it if you got a uh, standard chop saw that doesn't slide. Well, actually, you have to flip it regardless, but it's easier with the slide. And 10 will get it right away. Um, so anyway, when I opened up the holes in the back, it stopped doing the nose lifting thing. All right, so let's pull this. Let's pull this out. And uh, what I've got in here is making this modular. That's the idea. So I have a battery tray, just like that. This look back inside there. We've got a lead that goes back to the uh, speed controller. Speed controller down the uh, back end over there. You can see. Um, you can see the. Um, what's left of a modified um, heat sink. It's attached to the, in place of the standard heat sink on a, on a um, speed controller. You can do that. Um, and you can get heat sinks too. You can buy them online and just Google in heat sink. You'll find what you need. Um, so I have steerable nose wheel. Servo hangs out the bottom. Got a crank here. I've got a little springer. This came off the Sedona as well. So this is a leftover. A little springer front end that helps with uh, nose plants. So let's get back to the um, the battery tray. All of this is out of foam board. This is all foam board. Real lightweight. It's kind of rigid. Pretty rigid actually, unless you flex it. Um, so I have um, I have four 11 volt three cells in here that I've paired. So I've got 22 volts to this dongle here. 22 and each of these is 2200 so I've got about 4,000 here in total and that's what I usually get a charge is uh, 4,000 is the number all right and then this back here I just added recently uh, we'll call that the video we'll call that the video battery and it may end up staying like that I may go to a lighter one but right now with this configuration I need I needed that extra battery weight right there, which is in front of the CG. I needed that extra battery weight um, to give me a little better performance, uh, flight characteristics, stability, that kind of thing. And uh, there's my 
There's my wild dog over there. He's exploring crazy. Where are you, Brody? Right. Anyway. <clears throat> so the landing gear. The landing gear is chop saw works great for all of this because you get nice square cuts. So I made a um, I cut a circle of plywood, um, quarter inch plywood, lightweight, and uh, diced it in half roughly, and made a landing gear block inside there, and. Um, so there you have it. Um, epoxy doesn't stick well, even if you rough it up. If you rough it up with a real coarse, um, if you rough it up with a real coarse um, piece of uh, sanding paper or, or I use belt sander belts. Just, Brody, stay here. Stay here. Come. Good boy. Um, it sticks pretty good, but it's uh, like surfacey. It doesn't really grab. Hot glue works really, really well. Hot glue is heavy, so I'll use it sparingly. <clears throat> I use hot glue on uh, most of my non-critical, and then what happened, the nose gear block right here, um, that had hot, uh, not hot glue, but um, had epoxy in there, and it came right, right free of this interior surface. So if you use alcohol, I mean uh, sanding paper, like a coarse grit, 60 or 80 grit, really scuff up the crap out of it. Then use alcohol to take off uh, what might, what film that might be there. And then uh, go to town with that. And then uh, what I did is I added a couple screws up underneath here, right through, pre-drill those little screws. That way it's not coming off at all. <clears throat> Let's see. So, ailerons, ailerons and elevator. Yep, and I have a, uh, a gyro on the ailerons. I will then have, uh, now that this airframe is working, oh, boom. The, uh, if anyone's ever installed um, a sliding shower door on a tub, you get these pieces of aluminum uh, trim pieces that go to the wall on the verticals and they're typically an I-beam in shape or it could be a C-channel. In this case I had one that was um, an I-beam shaped like an I and it's real lightweight um, non-structural aluminum very lightweight and has a nice rigidity to it. This is an I-beam cut down the center which forms two T's. Perfect! Perfect for um, attaching up underneath to the wing. A couple of screws, hot glue out here on the tail. Got some verticals. Keep it simple. This uh, this tail plane, the horizontal uh, stabilizer tail plane, is the same dimensions of the original Sedona. It's about 22 inches in width and uh, works very nicely. This bird seems to wag just a little bit. I'm wondering if my verticals need to be a little bit taller. So again, hot glue, scab on a little two or three, four inches maybe on top of that uh, to get a little more height above the wing. And it may, uh, it may reduce that, although crosswinds then become your negative. So right now, crosswind doesn't affect it all that much, so that kind of leads me to believe that um, my verticals might be a little on the short side, height-wise. Um, but who knows? It acts pretty nice. I probably won't add anything to it. I added that piece in the middle there um, for no apparent reason. There's, um, It just looks cool, right? Same angle on the front, blah, blah. The idea is some of the guys are doing that uh, right behind the prop to straighten out the um, the airflow, and uh, that way it, it kind of straightens it out and takes out some of the turbulence that's going across that elevator. Um, I do have flaps ability here. 
a single servo can yank these up, or air brakes rather, not flaps. And I can get these two together and uh, do some air brakes because man, this thing just rips through. Um, the all up weight, I'm not sure what it is right now. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't weighed it yet, but it's it's beastly. It's um it's definitely heavier than stock. So that's the 42, 4120, 4120 motor from uh, Hobby People. I know I've talked about it before. 41205, right there. Um, excellent motor for the money. And I'm swinging a, an 11.8 there. You can see I have my stamp of approval of balance. Okay. It's upside down. There we go. Can't read it now. And um, so the 11.8 works really nice. Um, probably a 12.8 would even do very nicely. Right now I'm running at just under half uh, half throttle. And I'm getting 20 minutes on 4,000 4, uh, milliamps or 4 amps. Um, the system runs slightly warm to the touch. Uh, but not hot at all. So anyway, uh, that's probably enough for now. I'll probably think of something else later. Alright guys, uh, enjoy. If you have questions, throw it down in the post. Thanks. Bye. West out.